So, so far today I, I think magnetism wise we, we did not discuss too much, we have introduced the topic magnetism where the origin of the magnetism coming or magnetic moment coming into the molecule. It is the molecule unpaired electron that is responsible, number of unpaired electron should technically give you the clear cut idea what is the magnetic moment going to be, there is some more to it. Of course, in reality we know that it is orbital angular momentum and the spin only values that should give you that should combine, but you do not need to combine because it is somewhat restricted, it is still somewhat allowed that is where when it is allowed then you have a better value or the higher value for magnetic moment right. And when that spin only plus orbital angular momentum is coming into picture that is what we have introduced, but we will be discussing from here on in the next class ok. Now, we will we have two more topic, one is this magnetism, the next one will be bioenergy, two classes we should be able to finish, yeah. Oh yes, that is a good question, sure, it, it I think if I am getting, I, I think in, in the beginning I did not get your point, at the end what I, I get is. So, you have to think the total ensemble, like if of course, if a molecule, one molecule has some magnetic moment, another molecule associated with it has another magnetic moment, you have to basically assemble. Yes, at the end, at the very last, at the end we will see, it is not the individual magnetic behavior will matter, it is the total collective molecule, whatever molecule you are associated with, if it is only one type of molecule one center, then that is of no problem. But the moment you have let us say cluster, ok, one thing is attached via another thing, through another thing, then things are more complicated. So, that is what uh, that is where I would like to take you to at the end of the magnetism. So, they, they can two magnet can communicate through a mediator, one spin up, another spin up, is it going to be magnetic moving, moment going to be addition of these two, can can they talk with each other and reverse, inverse. Let us say this is up in between these two magnet, there is something which is communicating between the two. Can that communicator influence the total magnetic behavior? So, there is there is magnetic communication that is actually the basis for you know more fun in, in this area. We will not discuss a lot of case, maybe one or two case we will discuss and then leave, ok. So, I think is that the type of queries you are having or maybe I have taken you to a different direction, Some something related. I, initially I, I could not hear you, but at the end I think I, I hear, heard you correctly, ok. Now, hopefully the next part will not be that long another uh, 20 minutes or so or 30 minutes maximum depends on how you, how you would. This is the third tutorial which is on coordination compound. You have the printout, the question? No problem, I have the question here, ok. All right, tutorial. If you want to go, I have no problem. But I think it's important. Little, I'll try to get it done very quickly. Tutorial questions were uploaded in the module, and nowadays all of you are having smartphone. So, if you have Wi-Fi connection, you could have downloaded earlier. Okay, don't come to my office to download it. Okay, just take it. One of you should have been able to download it. If you are really dying, I you could have asked me. I could have sent you or give you a printout. Okay. Anyway, that doesn't matter too much. It is in there. If you like, I can give you the printout the next time. 
who is going to pay for it? <laughs> okay, I, I, we, can, we can give it. Uh, IIT can pay for it. Of course, you are paying IIT. Right, no problem. Um, so, first question. Crystalline silver oxide is diamagnetic. Explain. Question number one. Okay. So, sometime you have to be little bit cautious, some, some, not all of the question either in the exam or in a tutorial are going to be straightforward. There is something more into it. So, silver oxide, you just calculate, you figure out what is the silver ox oxidation state, do it. Plus two, what is the electronic configuration? Okay, time up. Silver oxidation state is plus 2. So, it is a D9 electronic configuration. D9 on electronic configuration means one unpaired electron. Okay. So, it should be paramagnetic. Diamagnetic means no spin, right? Pair or at least paired spin. How it is? This is where I, I was saying it is a trick question. So, it is it is a mixture of, sorry. Yeah, that's what it is. So, that is where it is a trick question. So, it's a mixture of Ag2O and Ag2O3. Now, you have to look back at each of them. Let me, let me try to discuss. You have to look back each of them, silver plus, silver plus 1 plus and silver 3 plus. O1 minus is usually not possible. You want to? No, 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 don't worry. I will give you. I will upload. Since I have made the slide, I will upload. Okay, no need to. I mean, if you bother, if you are bothered to take the picture and take it, it is a public domain thing. Why, sh why should I not upload it? Okay. Uh, no need to just think little bit. Silver 1. Please, if you want to get it done quickly, either you answer quickly or I give you the answer and go. I will upload the slide. Okay. Now, silver 1 is going to be D10 configuration. That is diamagnetic. This is silver 1. Two of the silver 1, one is oxide. Another over here, this is silver 3 plus. Oxide is always minus 2, 6 minus, so it has to be silver 3 plus. Silver 3 plus means what? 1 D8 configuration, right? So, D8 configuration can be, can be diamagnetic, okay? D8 going to be square planar. Ah. Because silver is in high oxidation state. It's a, so, this is where sometimes the problem comes, either the high oxidation state, so, it is the combination of both. The ligand should be strong field or metal should be high oxidation state or the combination of higher oxidation state and strong field ligand. Then you are going to get that. Okay. Sorry? Oxidation state. Ag2O plus 1, silver is in plus 1, oxide is oxide, all oxide, water, all oxide, metal, any oxide you see is minus 2. Water, if you split, H plus H plus oxide, 2 minus, right? Now that is fine. So, there the geometry as you can see over here, silver is linear and silver tree which are in gray, uh, gray in here it is going to be square planar, square planar, oxide, 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 silver is in the middle. Okay. Now, that is, you know, that is some, some question which is directly, I think these questions are something we have given pre earlier also, same questions for the tutorial. Now, work out the hybridization and geometry for the following complexes using the valence bond approach. First one is, okay, the second one is, why is that? 
fantastic. So, nickel is in zero oxidation state, ok. Uh, and then therefore, you, you I think this is may not be feasible. Four of them sp sp3 hybridization, four of the four of the ligand sp3 hybridization, it is going to be tetrahedral. Nickel tetracyanide, it is going to be strong field ligand, and thereby the pairing will occur by valence bond approach. We are going to discuss it by valence bond approach, and you know that pairing will occur the elect the hybridization will be then dsp2 that is going to be the square planar of course you can explain it better by crystal field theory but that's okay all right now i think i will skip this this is the summary what is given here yes that 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 is where over here oso4 electronic configuration is going to be 4F14, 5D6, 6S2. Okay, this is what is little bit difficult over here to do it by VVT. Anyway, if you do it by ionic approach, osmium 7 plus, it is going to be 4F14. Osmium, sorry, oxygen, ox, osmium is going to be 8 plus, 6 plus 2, 8. So 4F14 total it is going to be D3S hybridization and it is going to be tetrahedral. We do not call it D4 or anything, it is going to be D3S, 3 of D and 1 of S, D3S that is going to be tetrahedral by covalent approach similarly you can look at and you can tell that it is going to be D3S as well. It is little bit on a borderline explanation. It's, it's See, I mean, these are these are little bit older approach, VBT approach. So the explanation is going to be little bit screwed at some point. But this is okay. You can kind of make sense for both of them. Okay. Now this is most of them are clear cut. Tetrahedral square planar, tetrahedral square planar, linear tetrahedral, tetrahedral. Linear is that silver ammonium, where another molecule will be coordinating. Anyway, this is you should be able to find out by whatever you have done earlier. Tetrahedral place should not be a problem. Square planar are the one where you have the stronger ligand, ok. If it is a D8 configuration, that is where the square planar comes into picture. But the real reason that valence bond theory wise explanation was simply given it is a strong field ligand and thereby it should be paired off and so on that is what you have learned in the valence bond approach. But by crystal field approach we have shown how things are going in terms of electron distribution, how orbitals are splitted and thereby why we are saying that D8 is going to be the square planar one. Okay. Now, While the most stable chloride of zirconium is zirconium tetrachloride, that of palladium is palladium chloride PdCl2. Yes, it is also called relativistic effect. What is that? Anyone wants to answer? Sorry? Uh, no, it is it's more of a d orbital. See what we have seen so far, it is that there, there are, let me tell you, there are, these are palladium is going to be down the periodic table. So, you have already seen this um, Z effective. Because, because the, those orbitals, the higher orbitals which are getting involved, they are not neutralizing the positive charge effectively. So, as we were discussing in the very early class, first class or so, Z effective is going to be very, very strong. The moment Z effective is going to be strong, they will be pulling out, pulling in those d orbitals which are going to participate into the plus 4 oxidation state. Up to plus 2 is okay, 
but plus 4 another 2 electron release although technically possible since z effective is very high it is going to not allow those electrons last 2 electrons to get oxidized to palladium something like plus 4 relatively speaking. So, those due to the high z effective you are not going to participate very strongly or those plus 4 oxidation state achieving becomes difficult. This is what it is called relativistic theory or relativistic effect or so called inert pair effect. As you go down in the periodic table the participation of the electrons becomes less and less. I mean if from first row to second row if you go there, there you do not see much effect. As you go down below further it, it becomes more prominent right. So, therefore, although higher oxidation state is technically feasible, but practically it becomes difficult to access those removing those electrons last third electron fourth electron becomes extremely difficult because z effective is higher this is going to pull in very tightly. These are becoming more of a core like the electrons become more of a core I mean why it is difficult it is it become part of the core so much attracted it does not want to leave those or the atom is not going to leave those. When next question question number 4 when high pressure is applied what type of electronic configuration is favored for a D5 transition? When high pressure is applied, what type of electronic configuration is favored for a D5 transition metal complex? It is you are going to put high pressure, you are going to take out the electron from those let us say dz square orbital which is shown in there and thereby you are going to kind of pair off the electron. So, because it leads to low electron density between the metal and the ligand that is along the bond axis you are going to end up pairing. So, you will get the low spin complex not clear when high pressure is applied I will tell you it is not clear to me as well let me see what type of electronic configuration is favored for a D 5 transition metal complex. So, D 5 you are uh, going to have two configuration right T 2 T 2 G T 2 G 3 E G 2 and another configuration is going to be T 2 G 5 E G 0 right. Now, I think it is um, it is you are going to apply more field means you are going to split between the T 2 G and E G E G level. If you are pulling out you are going to separate out the T 2 G versus E G still not clear. I am getting more confused I will I'll, I'll bring it back ok leave it I think uh, pulling so base uh, it is clear that you pull out then you decrease the electron density along the axis. T H can can you explain low electron density between the metal and the ligand that is along the bond axis what exactly is happening? Repulsion between what? Ligand and metal. Ligand and metal. Okay. Oh, okay, 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 okay. So, when you are compressing, wait, 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 I am not clear yet when you are compressing between these two then yeah. repulsion force to be much more yeah. Okay fine I will I, I think it is still not clear and they, uh, unless I am 100 percent clear I will not okay fine it is it is interesting yeah. I think you are saying exactly what he is trying to say 
but explaining the explaining becomes little bit difficult let me let me digest it little bit better i will come back okay now provide reasons for the fact that a number of tetrahedral cobalt 2 complex are stable whereas the corresponding nickel 2 complexes are not anyone provide reasons for the fact that a number of tetrahedral cobalt 2 plus complexes are stable and whereas corresponding nickel 2 complexes are not nickel 2 is what d8 d8 tetrahedral yeah, square plane or more or tetrahedral versus octahedral even if you are considering and cobalt 2 plus tet tetrahedral and octahedral you are considering what you see that is what you have to see so d7 tetrahedral cfac and d7 octahedral cfac so what you see overall is d7 tetrahedral complex is greater cfac is greater than the d8 tetrahedral complex calculate the d7 cfac for tetrahedral field what is the d7 cfac minus 12 dt right d7 cfac tetrahedral d7 yeah tetrahedral is high spin always high spin minus 12 right 12 dq what is for d8 minus minus 8 12 and 4 over there right minus 8 12 which one is more stable d7 is more stable so d7 is going to be cobalt 2 plus d7 is going to be tetrahedral you no no i am asking you to compare tetrahedral versus tetrahedral tetrahedral for d7 tetrahedral for d8 octahedral for d7 octahedral for d8 you see the answer is within that okay so cfac of d d8 octahedral d8 octahedral will be just just do the octahedral simple octahedral okay okay so it is going to be minus 1.2 or 12 delta q or dq and what is for d d7 minus no po, minus 0.8 or 8 dq d7 calculate that's what i was saying maximum cases calculate the cfac of both the geometry d7 what is the geometry d8 what is the geometry what is the splitting oh, sorry what is the stabilization energy this you should be able to do it in your dream now the statements here is correct cfac for d7 is more for tetrahedral case you have find out and cfac for d8 octahedral is more CFAC of D8 octahedral complex is greater than D7 octahedral. You calculate, you will find. So, for this D8, it is going to be minus 12 dq or minus 1.2 delta 0. For D7, it is going to be minus 8 dq or 0.8 delta 0 or delta octahedral. Right? The fact is here, so the answer is correct the experimental fact is also given over here which you can call corroborate okay fine provide reasons for the fact that a number of tetrahedral cobalt complex are stable whereas corresponding nickel 2 complexes are not that is the answer of course this is clearly shows that cobalt 2 plus prefer tetrahedral nickel 2 plus are not preferring tetrahedral i am not saying what it is right so answer is okay 
Now, using the crystal field stabilization energy as criteria, indicate whether you expect the following spinels to be normal or inverse. Now, calculate, calculate and figure it out. Another 10 minutes we should be done. Calculate quickly. See, this is what I was really trying to tell you that you should be able to calculate the CFSC really quick. Write down, calculate. CFSC for Fe 3 plus. What we have asked you to for normal and inverse spinel, you do not have to worry about tetrahedral. You just think about octahedral. Fe 3 plus and Fe 2 plus. Octahedral and it is going to be high spin. High spin octahedral case, you just calculate. Should I calculate? No, I can calculate. Fe 3 plus is D5 system. High spin D5 system is 0. D T2G3 is E2. So, there is 0 CFSC. High spin iron 2 plus, that is D6. D6 means high spin T2G4 is E2. Fe2 plus having minus 4 dq as a stabilization energy. Fe3 plus having 0 stabilization energy. So, higher oxidation state is having less stabilization. Lower oxidation state is having higher stabilization. You are going to get an inverse spinel. I guess I was discussing in the class as well. Now, CO3 O4 is a little tricky case. Because CO3 is low spin, high charge and uh, iron cobalt D6 ion is low spin because high charge even with weak ligand. This is a tricky case. CO3 plus has a similar structure with D7 and D6 configuration. This is going to be a normal spinel. D7, D7 is what? D7, D7 is what? CO2 plus is D7, iron cobalt. D7 is CO2 plus. If you CO2 plus with oxide, it is not going to be the low spin, it is going to be the high spin. CO2 plus lower oxidation state, oxide is not that of a great ligand, so it is going to be the high spin. CO2 plus high spin D7, so it is going to be minus 8 dq. Okay. How about CO3 plus? CO3 plus it is going to be D6. D6 it is going to be minus 4 dq if it is high spin. 3 T2G4 is E2. T2G4 is E2 if it is high spin D6. Now, the problem is that is minus 4 dq. Technically speaking, it should be inverse spinel. Higher oxidation state is having lower stability compared to the lower oxidation state. But CO3 plus, this is an exception you have to kind of remember, but uh, we will try in the exam, we will try to give not such example. Okay? CO3 plus being high oxidation state and even with the lower oxidation, lower, uh, you know, even if the, you know, weaker field ligand such as oxide, we still are going to get this uh, normal spinel. Okay, next, few more questions left. By showing the details, determine the CFSC for the following complex. These are the very simple question. CFSC for Fe 2 plus. Fe 2 plus is D6. Cl is a weak field ligand. Iron is 2 plus, low oxidation state. So, it is going to be the high spin. D6 high spin. T2G4 is E2. T2G3 is E2 cancels out, minus 4 dq. All of you got it? Or should I wait a little bit? Okay. 30 seconds.
the titanium titanium is going to be sorry not tungsten my bad okay tungsten tungsten is going to be carbonyl is going to be strong field ligand almost the strongest you can get out there so it is going to give you low spin for sure p2g6 is e0 okay yeah yeah it's usually we when we count we just count for d until d is like this 6 that's why we are counting because you, that was atomic orbital you have to take into the atomic orbital into the more of a complex orbital or molecular orbital we, we never so far we never talk about d2 s d you know atomic orbital wise it is correct d4 s2 d4 but in reality when you are doing anything with the hybridization or anything with um especially with uh, the complexation you have to say it it is a, it's a it's a mixing orbital mixing is happening yeah you, you have to say it is a d6 so t2g6 is e0 okay now explain what is meant by the term synergic bonding this is a textbook question synergic bonding i think you have studied for your exam before it's the it's the pi bonding between the between the ligand sorry sigma bonding between the ligand this uh, ligand orbital and the metal orbital and pi back bonding between the metal orbital and the anti bonding orbital of the carbon monoxide okay it's written in the way um, i think you have studied before synergic bonding it's the ligand donates metal gives back so it's i am teaching that's what i was trying to say you you tomorrow you will give me money that is the synergic bonding right once you become trillionaire i am sure some of you billionaire or whatever okay now the chromium 2 plus ion in crf2 is surrounded by six fluoride ions chromium 2 plus this is this is this is a clear cut def, i mean statement is given it is crf2 you are saying but it is surrounded by six ligands okay it's surrounded by six fluoride of these four are at a distance of 2 angstrom four are shorter and the other two are at a distance of 2.43 angstrom explain this observation okay so chromium 2 plus is surrounded by six fluoride ions in an octahedral environment it surrounded by six fluoride ions chromium 2 plus is what d4 scandium titanium vanadium chromium d4 s2 so 2 plus is going to be d4 now it is going to be t2g3 is e1 right so the unsymmetrical distribution of electrons in eg orbital that's what we were trying to show right the eg orbital whenever you are having unsymmetrical filling then there is a possibility of further splitting of the eg orbital eg orbital can be splitted this observation suggests that eg electrons in dj2 orbital because the two two of them are longer Four, four are shorter. Two are longer. Little bit longer. Two longer means that directions it is getting stabilized. The ligands are getting longer. That means ligands are not coming close. I think now I can explain a little bit that question. Anyway, ligands are farther, and therefore Z it is going to be Z out. right slightly z out and you are going to get dz square orbital stabilized ligand are far at the z direction therefore dz2 orbital is going to be stabilized slightly lower in energy 
and the electron since it is stabilized electron is going to go there because you it wants to achieve the stabilized state okay move on that's it